Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and this is probably the busiest this whole studio has ever looked. As you can see, we've got quite a few boards here and this isn't actually all of them. This is all I could fit on the desk. But today is a very important day. We're talking Coffee Lake. Now, not the existing 8th gen. Today is all about the 9th gen CPUs. With that also comes the Z390 chipset, which kind of explains all these boards here. Now, before I go into the actual processor that we're looking at today, it's worth talking a little bit about a little bit more about the whole stack and where it kind of sees itself in the market, how it competes against AMD. So let's jump into it and take a look. So taking a look at the ninth gen, there is certain things that we first have to look at. So obviously with the eighth gen, we had our six core processors with 12 threads. Well, this is actually the first time in the consumer segment where we're gonna have more than that. So what we've got here is the i9-9900K. It actually comes with eight cores and 16 threads, which is the first time an i9 has actually been in the consumer segment. As you may know, we have had processors in the past, like the i9-7980XE, which is, well, an absolute mammoth. And with that, that's kind of restricted to the HEDT space. For the consumer segment, this is the first time we've seen it. We do have to obviously think about AMD as well with their Ryzen 7 2700X, which brings in a, well, a pretty beefy chip for around 295 pounds in the UK, 295 dollars in the US plus taxes. But what can the i9 really sort of give to us? Well, first we need to take a look at the packaging. So when it comes to the packaging, I don't know if anyone else has noticed, but over the last couple of years, well, Intel have kept theirs pretty much the same, a tiny little box that you get as retail packaging. AMD, however, have kind of stirred the pot a little bit. You may remember the Threadripper box, which came in on the first generation Threadripper, really kind of, you know, got things going. And then with the second generation of Threadripper, it got even better. Intel have actually tried to fight back with this, and you've probably all seen the kind of diamond-esque looking, uh, I don't even know what size it is, is it shape, is it a dodecahedron or something crazy, but they really tried to do something a bit different. And it's actually a nice thing to see. Now, sadly, that is for retail customers only. As media, we do still get something quite nice. As you can see, Core i9 unlocked. And then opening it up inside, we have Performance Unleashed. So just a, a few little buzzwords here and there. Ninth gen Core i9, and underneath here is our processor. The i9-9900K pretty much looks like any other Coffee Lake CPU as it is part of the same family and therefore uses exactly the same design throughout. The only difference that you can't actually see is that the TIM is soldered now. This means that there's no more de-lidding necessary, which is especially useful for those wanting extreme overclocks. This is, well, pretty handy as it means you only have one chance of failure with paste instead of two. It's also worth noting that the i9-9900K, like the rest of the 9th gen processors, will work on all 300 series boards, meaning that the 8th gen works on Z390 and the 9th gen are both forwards and backwards compatible. So with the i9-9900K, as well as the 9700K and the 9600K, there are obviously a whole new host of boards running the Z390 chipset. And we've actually got reviews of these in both video and written format, and I will link to them probably somewhere around my head and also in the description below. So it is worth going and checking them out. Now Intel actually brand this as the first 9th gen i9 processor, but the way that that's worded kind of says to me that maybe more i9 processors are yet to come, especially in the ninth generation. So it'd be really interesting to see if Intel do have maybe some more tricks up their sleeve, at least after launch. So specs wise, the i9-9900K has eight cores and 16 threads, and it clocks in with a base speed of 3.6 gigahertz, but can turbo up to five gigahertz. Though this is a little bit sketchy. It's five gigahertz on two cores, 4.8 on two cores, and 4.7 on the remaining four cores. Other key specs that people will care about is the 16 megabytes of L3 cache, memory support of DDR4-2666, without overclocking obviously, and a 95 watt TDP. Similar in power delivery to the Ryzen 7 2700X, as well as the 8700K from the eighth generation. So specs wise, pretty much the same, at least in power delivery, but you've got to remember now we have eight cores and 16 threads. And we're going to find out a little bit later on as to how much that's actually going to help us. In terms of the onboard graphics, it does have the Intel UHD 630, but 
That's exactly the same graphics that was on the previous generation, 8700K. Being Coffee Lake, they haven't really changed it, so there's no point really delving too much into that at the moment. With the new chip also comes a new chipset, and this is where Z390 comes into play, offering a couple of key features that we didn't have as standard before. The new Z390 chipset now gives us USB 3.1 Gen 2 and also Intel wireless AC Wi-Fi. Now it is worth noting that the likes of ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI and some of the other key partners to Intel do have Wi-Fi enabled boards and non-Wi-Fi boards, and you'll typically pay around £15 extra or around $20 US for that Wi-Fi capability. I mean, in my opinion, I actually think that's a pretty good deal because if you were going to go out and buy a Wi-Fi adapter, you're probably going to pay about the same for it. Other than that, the 9900K compared to the 8th generation is pretty much the same in terms of architecture. It's a 14 nanometer fabrication process, you have AVX2, and so on. So I guess really it comes down to the performance. Now, they actually tout the i9-9900K as the world's best gaming processor. So let's, well, let's find out if it's true, shall we? Now, when it comes to testing, we do our utmost to keep everything as consistent and fair as possible. We don't favor AMD over Intel, vice versa. So what we do when it comes to our testing platforms is we try to keep everything, well, as consistent as physically possible. Sometimes you'll find a board has two memory slots. Sometimes it will have four. Sometimes there's other features that are specific to a motherboard that will throw our testing out. So it is worth noting that you're probably better off doing your own test to really get a good grasp of how things do. But obviously comparisons like this are vitally important. So what we've managed to do here is get our Gigabyte Master or Aorus Master Z390 board with the i9-9900K. We're gonna run through exactly how it compares with other processors. So we've got everything ranging from uh, a Ryzen 5 uh, 1400 all the way up to well, the 7980XE, which is an absolute $2,000 monster. We've also got the Threadripper 2950X. So we've got a whole host of CPUs and we're hoping, well, the i9-9900K should come out fairly on top. Before we talk about performance, let's talk about overclocking. Now, overclocking this chip isn't any different from overclocking the 8th gen or anything on the Z370 platform. With the Gigabyte Aorus Master, we managed to get five gigahertz quite simply by adjusting each core to 50. An increase in voltage to 1.375 gave us the stability that we needed. And while in operation this did fluctuate slightly, you can actually see from our screenshot it came in on a slight droop of 1.332 volts. Once we've reached our stable platform and managed to get our newfound overclock, well, it was time to then test it at both stock and overclock. So let's jump in and take a look at those glorious benchmarks. So I've actually got my phone here because what I wanted to do was after looking at the benchmarks, I wanted to make sort of write down some notes and I've actually come up with a few things to really sort of talk through the benchmarks. So just going through them quickly, really, 3D Mark Firestrike, this was actually the best. It beat the 7980XE by about 300 points, which is pretty impressive considering the price point of this compared to the $2,000 or £2,000 7980XE. 
In Superposition Extreme 1080, it was beaten by a few Ryzen chips, but most of that typically was all within margin of error. PC Mark 10 Express is a bit of an anomaly. It was near the top, but it actually lost to the 8700K. But PC Mark 10 Express has kind of always been a bit of a, a weird and awkward one, so we're gonna let that one slide. When it comes to W Prime, everything that beat it is actually a lot more money. So that included some of the HEDT chips, including the 7980XE and Threadripper 2, the 2950X. So if you're going to get a chip that's obviously going to cost less, you would expect it to perform slightly less. So I think that is all kind of, you know, within where we was expecting. Cinebench, again, it was only it was only really beaten by the HEDT chips and the, the Threadripper chips. So again, kind of where we expect the 9900K to be. In terms of handbrake conversion, it was only beaten by the second generation Threadripper. So it just goes to show that extra cores really do come in handy but it was weird how it didn't beat the 7980XE. There are some quite sort of weird results here. Some we expected, some we didn't. Ada 64 memory bandwidth, it was actually middle of the road. It does improve upon the last gen, but it was beaten by AMD. Um, maybe it's down to AMD having the slightly better memory controller. Maybe it's something we should look into at a later date. Memory latency, it was one of the best. Margin of error really again with the 8700K. Very, very similar chips, just again, more cores slightly you know, faster. On the games, it was pretty much near the top throughout most of them. So if you are, you know, looking for a gaming chip and Intel did kind of brand this as the world's best gaming processor, I think they're actually maybe on the money with that one. So well done to Intel. You, well, you've marketed it, right? We'll give you that. In terms of power, it actually had pretty decent power at idle. The load was kind of below all the HEDT parts like you'd expect, but it is eight cores and 16 threads. So kind of based on the power, I guess it is pretty much where we expected it to be. Temperatures, uh, so when we did our testing, we did it under a Notua D15. I've got it under an AIO right now, which is gonna give very, very similar results. And we ended up getting 30 degrees idle and 76 degrees load. When overclocked, it rose to about 45 degrees idle and 84 degrees load. So still pretty good, but I'd personally like to get this under a custom loop and sort of see if I could maybe push it up to about 1.5, uh, sorry, 5.2 gigahertz but I fear that would probably take about 1.4 volts to get there. But underwater, it should keep it nice and cool, probably under either a 360 or a 480 mil rad. Maybe they, again, that's something I can do in a later video. Let us know in the comments section if that's something you wanna see. Obviously with the overclocks, we had to put more power through it. So we did get slightly better performance, but again, that did give us slightly more power usage, slightly hotter temperatures. So kind of everything that you'd expect. So let's talk about price. So in the UK, this is currently retailing uh, at the time of filming this because some people do have it for pre-order at 599 pounds. Then in the US, $579 plus your usual taxes. Now this may actually seem quite excessive, but you've got to remember that when looking at the benchmarks, this was pretty much either at the top or near the top for everything. So it's a simple one of, well, processor was more expensive, but processor performed better. I mean, looking at gaming, so Intel branded this as the best, the world's best gaming processor. Let's compare it against the 2700X. In some games, it was actually 30 frames per second better. I mean, if you were getting 30 frames in a game and you were trying to aspire to that 60 frames per second mark, this is gonna do it for you without even the need for updating your graphics card. We ran everything with a Founders Edition 1080 Ti, and these are the results that we got. So really, you kind of have to look at that. When you look at other sort of benchmarks that we did, sometimes it was 200 points ahead, or it was a couple of frames ahead of the 2700X in other things. It really does sort of go to show that, yes, it may be excessive, but it is the best of the best. Even when you look at some of the results compared to HEDT and Threadripper. So I obviously wanna do a lot more tests with this. I wanna firstly get it underwater, see how far I can physically push it in terms of overclocking, maybe run a few benchmarks and sort of see how things go as things progress and things mature. But for me personally, the i9-9900K seems to be an absolutely fantastic and just amazing beast of a processor. Will I be buying one? Well, I've already got one, so I'm quite lucky. Let us know in the comments section below though, will you be buying one? I mean, the 2700X is cheaper, but yes, it does not perform nowhere near as well as this in certain things, other things it does. Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next video. See you later.